time to get busy One, two, three, six Shut the fuck up And bring that ballistic Rip from the biscuit Straight through the speakers with the Hey, hey What's going on guys? This is the Club of the Man 1993 coming at you for another retro WrestleMania review. We're trucking along here. We're on WrestleMania 19 now, which is considered to be one of the best WrestleManias of all time. I wouldn't say it is the best, but it's one of the best of all time. WrestleMania 17 is probably not going to be topped off. Again, I haven't seen them all yet, but I do think WrestleMania 17 is going to be the best. But um, WrestleMania 19, strong? Could the candidate be like... Top three, maybe even top five, somewhere up there. This is a really strong show. I enjoyed it. I, you know, I didn't get the full experience out of it really because I this was a show that because my schedule this week I've been watching you know part here, part there, but still watching it, I still enjoyed it. I thought it was a solid show. Um, the show took place on March thirtieth, two thousand three, at Safeco Field in Seattle, Washington, home of the Seattle Mariners, which I used to be a huge fan of since my favorite baseball player Ichiro Suzuki once played for the Seattle Mariners. But I still support them as well. But they're still a good team. But yes, this took place in their baseball field on March thirtieth, two thousand three. This is the first year of the brand split. This is the first year that there was a draft. Well, last year it was. It is also the first WrestleMania under WWE. I thought it was going to be WrestleMania 18, but WrestleMania 18 was under the WWF still. It was in May of 2002 was when they lost that. They had to drop the F because it was it was the same thing as um, World Wildlife Funds or whatever that, that, that company was called. So now it is World Wrestling Entertainment just like it is today. And again, it was the first year of the brand split. We have Raw and SmackDown. We have Raw specific matches and SmackDown specific matches. Uh, we do not have the European Championship anymore, and we do not have the Hardcore Championship anymore. We do have the Cruiserweight Championship. This is the first year for that as well, and the first WrestleMania for a couple superstars as well, including the main event. We'll get to that. We had a classic, a big return. This is WrestleMania. It's the first time somebody wrestled in four years. And um, we had the third and final match of a long rivalry take place. And we had a match 20 years in the making. So we got a lot to talk about in this WrestleMania. Let's get right into it. The opening match was the new title, the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. And I believe the Cruiserweight division had to be higher weight because Matt Hardy was in this match. This was Matt Hardy's first WrestleMania as a singles competitor. This was Matt Hardy version one, the Matt Facts um, gimmick he had, which worked out really well. He was always a strong heel. Whenever he was on his, whenever him and Jeff were split, he was a strong uh, singles heel as well. Taking on Rey Mysterio. This was Rey Mysterio's um, first WrestleMania match as well. The High Flyer, as we all know him as. He, he has his big WrestleMania moment in um, three years, I believe it is. Yep. Um, in 2006. But we'll get to that WrestleMania in a, in a little bit, but um, this match was pretty solid. It was some solid cruiserweight action. You know, you know Matt Hardy still being a little bit, bit, bit bigger for a cruiserweight, even though he was about 220 pounds, still meshed really well with Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio had a good first WrestleMania match as well. Camp a little bit short though, um, and Matt Hardy retains the cruiserweight championship, but it was still a really solid match. It was a good match to open up the show. One of the better cruiserweight matches I've seen since the Cruiserweight Classic because, you know, nowadays cruiserweight matches are just complete trash, unfortunately. But um, but this was a good opening match to the show. And then next, it was WrestleMania Streak match number 11. Now, originally it was supposed to be a tag match with The Undertaker and Nathan Jones taking on the team of The Big Show and A-Train. Um, before the match, though, on Sunday Night Heat, um, Big Show and A-Train attacked um, Nathan Jones backstage, pretty much making this a handicap match. Nathan Jones does eventually appear, though, and, you know, helps The Undertaker to win the match. Um, the match was all right. Nothing too spectacular. This is around the time also where the WWE was bringing in some really, some big man who had, like, really generic names like Nathan Jones or Brian Sch um, Schnitzer. Schnitzky or whatever his name was we were going to see in a few years, or Mike Knox. A few big guys that they tried so hard to get over and just didn't work out. Nathan Jones was one of them. This match wasn't really Undertaker's worst match, but it was probably the worst match of the night. But it was okay. Not to be spectacular. Taker, of course, and Nathan Jones get the victory, making Undertaker 11-0 at WrestleMania. 
Nothing too, too special to talk about, but whatever. We then had the WWE Women's Championship match. I believe, um, with the brand split, and this is something that, you know, I know some people are hoping for would, be, would have happened in the current brand split, um, but, you know, Raw and SmackDown each had their own world titles, uh, tag titles, um, but, um, Raw had the women, SmackDown had the cruiserweights, and, um, so this is just one women's title, so the match is, um, Jazz taking on Victoria with Stevie Richards t taking on Trish Stratus. Now, I believe it was a year or two ago, uh, cr Chris, no, uh, heavy last year. Trish Stratus, um, Lita and Jazz had a match that was kind of all right, but Trish was still a little bit green in the ring at the time. And so were all these, these women, but they were, those are a couple of women, Trish and Lita, who would go on to really define women's wrestling in this era, in the ruthless aggression era. Um, and this match was pretty solid as well. I thought that all three women out there put on a really strong show. Still probably one of the better matches in women's wrestling history I've seen. I, I'm trying to think of which one would probably be considered the best, but this one was, was a good match. Um, and, uh, Trish Stratus wins a match and becomes your new women's champion. Solid match. Happy for Trish. I believe she's now a two-time champion, I believe. So it's just, I think it was two out of like six times I think she won the cha Women's Championship. But, yep, still a good match. Moving on to the SmackDown Tag Team Championship Triple Threat Match. Um, it was Sheldon Benjamin. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let's say it the way the Usos, Usos would say it these days. Sheldon Benjamin. <laughs> um, he teamed up with um, Charlie Haas. Um, taking on the team of Los Guerreros, Eddie and Chavo, taking on Chris Benoit and Rhino. Now, Chris Benoit was absent for last year's WrestleMania with, a, I think, a neck injury or like a some sort of injury because it kept him out. Um, the next year, though, is, is Chris Benoit's final, um, not final, um, grand moment. We'll talk about that there. And I'll talk a little bit about, you know, the tragedy as well. Because this is a year that they try to, you know, Erase. Oh, that was history. Big time. The 2004 was his biggest year, but we get to that next year. Um, and that's just pretty good. It was. It started off a little bit slow, but when once um, Los Guerreros got in, that's when the match kind of picked up. You know, of course, them and um, you know, um, Chris Benoit as well. You know, just meshed out really well together. Um, it was just a solid, you know, high flying match. You know. A lot of people who just worked together. Had, these three teams had great chemistry. Um, fresh match as well. No Edge and Christian or the Dudley Boys or Hardy Boys at all who, who had steal in the show for tag team wrestling um, at WrestleMania's 16 and 17. WrestleMania 18 had a little bit more of like an average tag match. Who was of the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, and two others, I believe it was. I can't remember off the top of my head. Or, or it was the Hardys instead of But, you know, uh, the match was, was good. Um... Sheldon Benjamin and Charlie Haas um, retained their SmackDown tag titles. A, a fun tag match to watch, and I enjoy it. We're moving on now to the match of the night. And this is a match that was involved someone who returned after being gone for four years with a most likely career-ending back injury. That's right. HBK, Shawn, this is Shawn Michaels' first WrestleMania match, I believe, since WrestleMania... Let me see here. 2002 was 18... 17, 16, 15. WrestleMania 14, I believe it is. Um, yeah, this is the first rest is, at his WrestleMania 14 in 1998. Um, this is a, before that, at the Royal Rumbles, when he suffered that back injury, um, hitting it off the casket, doing that moonsault, I believe it was. Um, but this is his first match back, and he's taking on the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla, Mr. Y2J, Chris Jericho. This is long before the list of Jericho was even thought about. Um, and this match was just awesome. Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho, just two guys that just always seemed to know how to put on a classic, especially with their feud in 2008. And this feud came about because, you know, Chris Jericho was a man, you know, he always idolized Shawn Michaels. Oh, uh, he wanted to be like, who? Oh. But now that Chris Jericho has, you know, gained the fandom that he, he's gained, 
he now realizes that, you know, oh, he could be even better than Shawn Michaels. So, you know, he's, you know, just going out of his way to bully Shawn Michaels and whatnot. And Shawn Michaels is back and just to shut him up pretty much at WrestleMania. The match they had was awesome. The counters, the near falls and everything. It was just great. And then Shawn Michaels um, gets the victory, not by sweet chin music, but just by roll up. After the match, they hug it out because, you know, they had a really good match. He thought that Jericho was turning face, but instead he just gives Michaels the low blow. And it's still, and he's still, you know, the self-centered heel that he is. But again, this is a great match. These two, two definitely have even better matches down the line. In 2008, they have a ladder match, I know, for the world title. Um, they have a couple others, I know, in 2008. But this was just, these were just two guys that just, they knew how to put on a really good match. And this right here showed as well with just how well their styles worked together but such a classic uh we then had a wrestlemania cat fight it was um tanya bollinger or balinger um katana baker stacy kibler and um tori wilson and then jonathan coachman was out there watching he got involved in it somehow but you know it was just basically you know tv 14 stuff at the time you know Bra and panties type matches and whatnot. Stuff that, you know, they wanted to attract the older audience and the guys turned them on as well. That's just all this pretty much was. It was weird that Jonathan Coachman got involved in it somehow and he ends up being up down and, there, and all the women are standing above him. A little weird, but, you know, it was what it was. Can't say too much about it. Um, and we had the Raw World Heavyweight Championship. It was Triple H with Ric Flair taking on Booker T, the challenger. This is around the time where Evolution just started. Um, it was it was Triple H, Ric Flair, um, Randy Orton, and Batista, which those two weren't on a show. But Ric Flair was in Triple H's corner. Uh, Booker T, um, this was his second WrestleMania match. Just, he had a better, it was better than last year's with Edge because they were in a feud over Edge getting a Japanese soap commercial or wherever it was. It was really corny and goofy. Uh, but... This year, he had, you know, a better match. Still not that great of, like, you know, what he could probably do with WCW and whatnot. But he still had a good match with Triple H here. I know a lot of people felt... I've heard... I've read critics say that a lot of people felt that Booker T should have won that match. Um, and taking the title off Triple H. But Triple H won instead. I You know, even though he didn't, he still... Okay, he went on to have a good career. I believe 2006 was the year when he won King of the Ring. And he had his long title reign. Um, there with um, Queen Charmé and whatnot. All hail King Booker! That was that was a year of that. Um, but yeah, he still had, had a good showing, but he's, he showed that he still had some improvements to show in WWE as well. But it was still a solid match between him and the game. But Triple H retains the title um, and continues on as champion. We then had the match 20 years in the making. Hulk Hogan taking on Vince McMahon. This match was about... Who really created WrestleMania? You know, and it goes back to as far as personals, you know, Hulk Hogan, you know, was in court with Vince McMahon um, for the steroid scandal. He would then leave Vince McMahon and go and leave WWF and go to WCW. Um, and, of course, he came back, and now, you know, they're just going at each other's throats pretty much. This match was still pretty good. It's one of being two men in their 50s. This match was pretty solid, um, you know, you know, the bloodbath it was, there was some bl blood, and especially on Vince McMahon's face. Hogan had some as well. Um, Vince went out of his way to see, you know, mock Hulk Hogan with his leg drops on the tables. Um, and then, you know, Vince kept thinking he had Hogan where he wanted, but of course, Hogan being the immortal one, you know, just fight back and whatnot. Just, you know, more of like a character match, as always, with Hulk Hogan, with his, he had this superhero type character. But this match was, it was not a classic, but it was still really good for what it was. Um, Hogan would eventually get the win on Vince McMahon to get his revenge and solidify him as the one who made, made WrestleMania. Not Vince McMahon, but Hulk Hogan. So, a good match there. 20 years in the making. Great storytelling. I loved it. And then we got our next two matches, which were just awesome. The first one, The Rock taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin for the third time. Um, Rock is now a heel. You know, this is around the time where he starts doing some Hollywood productions. And, of course, like anyone else who goes into Hollywood, the fame starts to get to him. And he starts thinking that he's he's the, he's the shit, pretty much. Um, 
And, um, you know, he's just going to fool himself. He's taking some time off, but he's coming back. I believe next year is his last WrestleMania for seven years, pretty much, since, until he returns and hosts WrestleMania 27. Uh, but uh, his match is pretty much based on the story about everything The Rock knows he's done. He's won titles. He's won almost all titles. He's won the Royal Rumble. Um, he's pretty much done everything except beat Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's lost him twice. Now, it may be weird because, you know, The Rock is, you know, the heel, but he's still, like, the one who needs the victory here, and people are still, we're still booing him because that's why they decided to turn him heel because he'd been booed for a year or two now at one or two, the past one or two WrestleManias. It was his time that, you know, you decided to give him a fresh character, and they did, and it, it worked for him pretty much. Um, got it kept him, like, something fresh and keep going for a couple more years with his career, and this match with Steve Stone Cold Steve Austin was just, it was awesome. Um, it wasn't as good as their WrestleMania 17 match, but I'd say I liked it a little bit better than a WrestleMania 15 match, though. Um, you know, as usual, you know, they were just do each other's finishers. They were able to counter out of each other's finishers and kick out of them pretty well. well as also, it was just a typical Austin and The Rock match. The storyline wise, you know, like you know, it wasn't as dramatic as the main event of WrestleMania 17, but it was still overall a very solid match between these two. Um, and The Rock, for the first time at WrestleMania, gets a victory as Stone Cold Steve Austin even twice, but he gets. Um, he beat Stone Cold this time to give himself a victory and say he, he's done pretty much everything he felt he wanted to do. Well, he didn't fight, fight The Undertaker, though, I don't think. So, um, that's something The Rock never did was beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania or attempt at WrestleMania. But, oh, well, it was still strong match. I enjoyed it. Um, again, probably their second best match. Their best match, no doubt about it, was um, the match at WrestleMania 17, that awesome main event. But The Rock gets the win here. He does take some time off, I believe, but he is back for WrestleMania 20. And then again, he goes on his hiatus, and he's not back for another seven years uh, when he returns to host WrestleMania 27. Uh, we'll talk about that WrestleMania in a while also. And then finally, we got our main event, the SmackDown WWE Undisputed World Championship. Kurt Angle, the champion, taking on Brock Lesnar. I believe this is Lesnar's first WrestleMania, and quite possibly his best WrestleMania match by far, um, you know, he comes to WrestleMania, he comes to WWE, but then next year he has that atrocious match with Goldberg, and he, he goes on leaves, he wanted to go to the NFL or the MMA, can't remember which one it was, we're not going to talk about that until next year though, but this was just a really good match, it was a, an awesome, A-worthy match, um, him and Kurt Angle just worked very well together, this is when Kurt Angle had his broken neck, he was working on the broken neck, um, these guys just mixed together very well. I believe Kurt kicked out two or three, like two, maybe two F5s, I think. I can't remember. Um, but also, this was the match where Brock Lesnar tried doing his shooting star press that just failed miserably. He's lucky he didn't, like, you know, get severely hurt breaking his neck for it because it looked like it did not look good. Kurt was just too far away, and Brock's a big man, like 6'3, 280, 290 pounds. Um, but, you know, Kurt Angle was able to push him to the limit as well. Um, you know, you see Brock Lesnar these days, like, manhandling people. Well, Brock Lesnar wasn't completely manhandling Kurt Angle, though, in this match either. And that's what made it a lot more fun. Um, Lesnar would go on, though, to win the match, though, after hitting a third F5 on Kurt Angle for the victory to win, I believe, his first WWE Championship. I heard they also had a match later on down the line on SmackDown. Um, it was an Iron Man match. I have to probably look that up and see if I can find that here. That's possibly their best match. But this could be by far Lesnar's best match at WrestleMania. Well, I mean, let me see here. What else are WrestleMania matches? Next year's with Goldberg sucked. Um, and then his next one was at WrestleMania 29 against Triple H. That was that one wasn't too bad. Um, and then WrestleMania 30 is when he ended the streak, which the match was Matt. It was okay, but it wasn't anything spectacular. Um, well, so we have WrestleMania 31, despite the fact that, you know, he lost the title due to the catch by Seth Rollins. He still had a good match with Roman Reigns. I thought they still put on a good show. 32, no, nah, him and Dean didn't have a good match at all. And then 33, him and Goldberg had a good match. But I still say this is probably his best match to date at WrestleMania, as Brock Lesnar becomes your new reigning, defending, undisputed, SmackDown world champion of the world, Brock Lesnar. That is it, guys, for my um, retro review of WrestleMania 19. If I had to give this a grant, I'd give this a 
an A minus, a low A minus. It was a really strong show. I enjoyed it. Again, the only match I didn't really enjoy was um, the Undertaker match, which wasn't his fault really. But other than that, it's still a really solid show. Had some great matches, a classic, a couple matches that are still A worthy, but not quite classic. But it was a fun show, and um, yeah, definitely one of the best WrestleManias we've seen so far. So that is it, guys. What are your thoughts on WrestleMania 19? Leave that style in the comment section below, and be sure to click that like and subscribe for more content to come to this channel. Follow me on Twitter, Man Airboy 93 and I will see you guys later for whatever happens next on my channel. Until then, guys, have a great night.